you or someone you love needs help for an addiction, where do you turn? Foundations Recovery Network offers individualized treatment for the whole person. Our goal goes beyond short-term sobriety. We address substance abuse and co-occurring mental health issues together, providing a firm foundation for long-term recovery. The first step is often the hardest, but we're here with a free assessment, insurance information, and treatment options. Our confidential helpline is available 24-7, so call 877-714-1318 and discover the Foundation's Recovery Network difference today. This is Rich Roll, and you're listening to Silver Guy Radio. Yo, what's up? Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks to Humans for bringing us in. Thanks to you for supporting the show. Welcome to Sober Guy Radio. We're coming to you live from the Innovations in Recovery Conference down in San Diego, California. Uh, be sure to check us out at thatsoberguy.com. You get past episodes there, resources. You can contact us, and you can also help support the show. Now, if you have any questions about whether you or a loved one may need help, you can contact Foundations Recovery Network at 877-714-1318. They have nationwide residential and outpatient facilities, and they can provide a confidential assessment and review some of the best treatment options for you or your situation. Uh, Once again, let me give you that number. It's 877-714-1318. Man, we put out six six shows yesterday and two shows on Monday, Uh, so it's been uh, quite the last couple of days. We've connected with some great people. And I got a lot of cool people stopping by the booth to hang out and uh, talk about recovery. And uh, this morning, bright and early, Miss Hannah Marks stops by to say what's up. So uh, we're going to talk to her today. And she's from Warehab. And uh, was it Warehab Inc. or Warehab.com? Warehab.com. Warehab, works, yeah. Warehab.com. So Hannah, what's up? How are you? I'm great. Thanks for yeah. asking. I really liked your intro. It was, oh, thank you. It was very well done. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes. Uh, so actually, Foundations brings us out here. Mm-hmm. They sponsor the show. And uh, we've done, this is the third um, uh, innovations conference we've done in San Diego. And then we've done a couple in Nashville. So we get to come out here and just kick it. And my wife and kids come, they kick it at the beach and I get to be out here and work and stuff. And then the so beach here stuff. is much different than Florida. It's really cold. Is it? Yeah, see, I've never been to Florida. Florida so is, is like you want, it's like bass water. You can stay in that water for really? like four hours. Yeah. See, I'd be chilling out there. Yeah. Here I, it's like an ice bath. I need to get a tan though first before I, you think I'm from California, I'm from Northern California, that I'd be tan. That's like the, uh, um, uh, the stereotypical California, no, 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 I'm, I'm powdery NorCal boy. I so. feel like most of the tanning is done inside a tanning bed in California. I think so. There's some <laughs> fake tans I've seen around here and you can spot them out from a mile away too. It's like, oh, fake tan fake tan <laughs> nothing against if you fake tan out there no no big deal man fake tan no i mean good, i man. i went to the gym it was it the day before yesterday and i was like i'm gonna get a fake tan i yeah. don't i think the california energy just inspired me for sure and i can't lie i'd be fronting if i didn't if i didn't say this i've fake tan before it's been a while but i've sat in the booth it's a little bit weird but anyways <laughs> Only, it's okay if you do the stand-up ones but the lay down ones freak me out yeah I always think someone's going to come in and like zip tie it shut and then I'm going to just cook to death. Yeah. That'd be a what, shitty way to go. What is that movie where the girl dies in the nanny bed? Do they do? Oh, yeah. See, <laughs> I can't even watch that stuff. It messes my mind up. Yeah. So tell us, uh, um, we'll, we'll get to where happened in a minute. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know we chatted before. You're in recovery. Yeah. Seven years. Um, what? Where'd you come from before that? And how'd you, um, how'd you kind of go down that path of addiction? Yeah. So I was actually raised in a a family that was very involved in 12 step recovery. Mm -hmm. So I like they, people who know me in the rooms will say like, Oh, Hannah, we saw you when you were two days old, your parents brought you here. And, um, so I was just raised in it and I always like believed that if I were to pick up a substance that I would have a problem Yeah. and I did it anyway. Um, (laughs) <laughs> I did, yeah. and um, I like I had some like uh, adverse childhood experiences as a kid that I feel like really did propel my um, issues with substance use, and um, I definitely didn't have a strong sense of self. Yeah. Like I never knew what I liked um, or what I wanted to be when I grew up, and like I didn't have those passions. Yeah, uh, and then when I I just wanted to be, I just wanted to fit in. Like, I just wanted to so badly. So, I mean, when I was 11, like, I, I think it was just the grade I was in, the kids I was around, it was like, the, everyone was talking about it. So, I, I took it to the next level and I wanted to start drinking. The first time I drank, I threw up for the whole night, like, nonstop. Me too. I had yeah. that same experience. Yeah, like, I probably had <laughs> alcohol poisoning. And, and the next day, I was like, that was fun. 
<laughs> really? <laughs> because the feeling yeah. I got yeah. while I was drinking was so, like, it was like this sense of ease that I hadn't experienced before. Yeah. So it really did fix my problem. It just the side effects that come along with it are really uh, uncomfortable and create a lot of sadness, depression, anxiety. How old were you? The first time eleven. You were eleven. Yeah. yeah. Sorry if I missed that. But so, I, and I wanted to point this out real quick. Um, you know, when we first started chatting, you said that you got you got sober when you were seventeen. You're only twenty four now. So, um, you know, that's to me that says a lot about you as a person, just um, figuring it out that you know, well none of us haven't figured out but you know what i'm saying like you figured out that this is an issue and like i'm you know i'm gonna take i'm gonna um i'm gonna take a stance now mm -hmm. and um you know i mean that's just like mad mad love to you for that because that's not an easy thing to do at such a young age so yeah. yeah i mean i went to my first treatment center I was 14 it was a wilderness program and it was in minnesota in the winter so i lived in the tent in negative 20 degree weather yeah i was gonna and say I, I bet that was warm yeah you would think like <laughs> after that experience nobody would want to drink again but i like i came back and maybe for a few months i did okay but I, yeah i was even got worse off than i did when before i left really and uh it just progressed and um I was getting myself in dangerous situations and I, I didn't, I had straight A's. I was like an overachiever. I've always been one, um, but I didn't apply to colleges. Um, so I was graduating co or high school and I was so just like, didn't, I was just so scared because I was about to be in the, I was 17. I was about to be an adult. I was like nothing going for my life. All I wanted to do was drink and get high and, yeah. um, and I, I was just like lost and depressed and I and like I was like every issue I have in my life, every lie I tell, every problem that occurs is because of drinking. Like I'm doing so much to hide this and it's not even working anymore. Like I'm still I'm drinking alone, sad. Yeah. And I just had this epiphany where I was like I'm gonna be 80 years old and living this life if I make it to that and I want so like I have so much inside of me that I want to give the world and all these things that I feel like I am like I felt like I was a loving person I felt like I had um like a lot of knowledge and I was caring but like when I looked at how I showed up in the real world it was selfish self-seeking I lied and yeah. I was like, just doing things for myself yeah and I just had this like I'm gonna try sobriety and if I can if I can quit so drinking and smoking for a long period of time and I don't, and it's okay, then maybe I'll go back. But once I quit, like yeah. I, I realized how much pain I was in and like I was angry. I was like, my, I'm not okay without it. So then I like found 12 step recovery and that really was a big help in early recovery for at, me. At 17. Yeah. What was that? Do you remember going to your first meeting? I mean, I went to meetings my whole childhood, right? But I do. Were your first meeting in recovery, I yeah. guess, or trying to. Yeah. So the first time, at first when I was, I was going to meetings and I wasn't committed to it. I was just like, oh, maybe I'll stop. Let me go. And I would like be in the meeting crying and like, but I wasn't like committed. So I would just go home and drink. Um, but the first time that I went and I actually made the decision that I was going to try the program, someone shared something about like having that hole inside them and nothing would fill it. And like the 12, 12 steps filled it for them. And that I can, I like, was like, Oh, that's awesome. Let me kind of made sense to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up, Jordan? <laughs> hey, Jordan. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. It, 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 it resonated. And I was like, well, that's what I've been doing. Like whether it's like eating like, 30 tubs of ice cream my, <laughs> my mom tells this story of when I was six and I had this obsession with mint chocolate chip ice cream and it was like three in the morning and she came downstairs and she just see, saw me with the spoon like whoops <laughs> I ate the whole tub like as a kid like I was always like extra more max out like if it feels good this much it's yeah. definitely gonna feel good that much it's kind of funny how it doesn't it doesn't really matter uh, what it is. Is it drugs, alcohol, ice cream, sex? Yeah. Like whatever. There's yeah. all kinds of those. No one wants to say sex. <laughs> I know. I know. I always, I always still feel weird saying sex sometimes, but I mean, it is. It's a part of it, and yeah. it's it's you know, um, it's definitely an issue for a lot of people. And um, no matter what it is, when we're not in that like right state, we're constantly trying to find stuff to 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 fill it with, you know. And food food is like I've talked about this a couple times. I feel like a broken record at this point, but like sugar, sugar. has been a really tough one for me. Yeah. So it's like cookies, ice cream, you know, I went down to the um they have you been down to the candy store down here? I, I can't even <laughs> walk into those stores. Dude. Like I, sometimes I don't even want to watch TV when I'm trying to eat right because it's just yeah. like 
bam, bam. It's all cheeseburger, over. Cheeseburger, French fries, candy, and I'm like, ah. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a trip. Yeah. So what, um, like, what is your uh, recovery program look like now? Like, what do you do on a daily basis that for someone watching or listening right now? By the way, we're on Facebook Live for those listening, which is cool. So you can probably go back and find this on. Hey, what's your page? You have a um, uh, wherehab.com. Uh, it's wherehab.com. W h e r e h a b. So if you want to go back and check this out, you can do that there. Um, but for someone out there watching or listening and they're wondering kind of what, um, you know, what a program might look like, what does that look like for you? For It's changed. It's definitely evolved. Like early on, every day in meetings, um, calling a sponsor every single day, um, like that was my life and until I got like healed a lot of things. And then I, I've, I went into therapy. I did like a lot of inner child work. And yeah. there's a really cool program called ACA, if anyone knows about it. Definitely look into it. Um, inner child, reparenting myself. And it's weird. It sounds so weird to uh, like a layman, but like makes a lot of sense to me. But now, like, I, uh, I feel like I found my purpose in life, and that's my company. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I made my mission to help empower um, people who are struggling with addiction through technology. So, like, we provide a platform um, with the mobile app that we're launching um, that meets people where they're at. There's no requirements or rules um, as long as you're not hurting anyone um, or yourself. And, uh, and then I... I help people find treatment when they need it, and uh, I don't get paid to do that. It's just part of what our website does. It's a community resource. And yeah. uh, our only hope is that if someone likes what they experience on our website, that the, they'll in turn download the app. and like, Yeah, so is, has the app launched yet? Nope, it launches next month. Okay, so the, the app's about to launch. And you were showing me a little bit of it uh, before we started, and it looks really cool. Tell us about the app. Like, what you can, what's, the, yeah. what's the interface of it look like? So the interface of the app, you would see, like, a bunch of clouds, which represent sober people, kind of similar to Waze. But the difference is, like, it's a social platform, not, like, a traffic platform. Got it. So uh, so you would go on the map. You could see sober people nearby. You can see all the meetings that are happening nearby. You can filter them by time. And the users add the meetings, and they take down the meetings so that it's a constantly updated where and when. Yeah. Then, like, say you're hosting a sober party, and you want people in the community to come. You can share it on the map, and people can RSVP. Nice. You can say, hey, I need a ride to a meeting, and someone can give you a ride. And it's all point based. So with the going to meetings, when you add a meeting, when you help another person, when you connect with someone, you get points. And with those points, you can unlock gift cards, college scholarships, all different kinds of things. You can search meetings anywhere in the world. Huh. Nice. Yeah. All over the place. So like if you went to Florida to get yeah. treatment and you're going back home to New York, like you can search all the meetings, start talking in the group chats, getting a fellowship. Yeah. And you have a profile as well. So. With that profile, you can post things like you would on Facebook, build followers, and um, all that. And then my favorite part of that about the app is you have a journal, and it's private to you. So you can fill out a daily inventory every day from your phone. That's you sweet. can uh, set goals for yourself. You can add your contacts. So, like, for me, I meet people in the recovery industry, and, like, they have, like, two initials to, like, help me remember where yeah. I met them at. And this, you can connect with them on the profile, store their numbers, see their picture, their profile. It makes it really easy. And then it just would call them through your normal self provider. Did you come up with all this shit yourself, Hannah? I mean, I have some an awesome team behind me. But awesome. um, when I decided I wanted to make the app, we I mapped it out. It, it almost looks like a cell system yeah. because it's like each block has... Um, a topic and then on that screen you'd see everything the screen will do and then my designer Chris like he's just incredible he made a really awesome product so is the app Warehab app also no it's or actually it called name? Sin Sin okay how do you spell it S-Y-N so it's S-Y-N. a Sober Y-N. Young Network Sober Young Network that's awesome that's yeah really and if cool. you if you log in you become a sinner <laughs> <laughs> so I, a lot of there's a little controversy around the name. I mean, I'm I we chose Sid because it's easy to remember, and yeah. because of the controversy, it'll stick with you. Yeah, true, true, true. Definitely S Y N Sober Young Network. All right, so what? Um, and and you know, once again, you're 24, and you're you know, you're just an entrepreneur, like trying to stay sober, trying to help other people in sobriety. It's really, really cool. Um, what do you? What do you have any advice or um, opinions or thoughts or anything for other young people in recovery yeah. out there that are, um, you know, maybe maybe someone is listening that, that's struggling right now? What would you tell them? Um, I would just say that, like, don't don't judge yourself too harshly. Like, where you're at is where you're at. And, like, when you're ready, um, 
you're gonna y- you can do it you know yeah. and yeah. um of course like there's so much risk out there and like if you can if you can bootstrap it and get through the the difficulty it does get better but don't if you make a mistake don't shame yourself like we've yeah. done that enough you know for sure yeah that's definitely been a huge thing for my recovery is learning how to give myself grace yeah i was always hard on myself even as a kid like playing sports school all that stuff i'm like my own worst enemy and um man as i've gotten older and been able to say okay like it's okay to like fuck up every now and again you know what i mean like it's it's okay to do that you know we're not perfect yeah learn from that shit i mean and if it comes to down to like drinking or eating eat man eat all you want (laughs) eat all the mint chocolate chocolate chip yeah one thing at a time like what's gonna what's the most detrimental to your life and focus on that one first for sure one thing at a time i like that yeah eat two gallons of mint chip you know (laughs) what the hell why not no don't do that you'll get fat and you'll be unhealthy don't do that but if it's that versus cocaine heroin or yeah Xanax definitely or, mint chocolate yeah, chip mint chocolate chip all the way well cool uh, uh tell us where we can find you at one more time and yeah. uh and then uh we'll let you go so you can follow us on facebook at Warehab, twitter Warehab, instagram Warehab, and then our website is Warehab.com. hannah thanks for joining us today thank you so much thanks for tuning in today you can go to that sober for past episodes resources uh you can also contact us there And uh, once again, we're coming to you live from Foundations uh, or uh, from Innovations and Recovery in San Diego, California, sponsored by Foundations Recovery Network. Much love to you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more episodes. Peace, love, respect. Keep your blood clean.